And now, good evening, everyone. So we're we're back with the Asplex PH Academy Alpha TV, no? Hello, kumusta sa ating mga viewers? Good evening, everyone. Yan. Hello po, Team YouTube. Magsigawan tayo dyan. Hello, good evening. Ayan, so, so nagsimula tayo last week from taking care of your mental health this uh, this pandemic. And now we'll have our new uh, uh, new episode for the Alpha TV right now about uh, creativity and innovation. No? So, here's Sir Lex. So, Sir Lex, ano bang special na Uh, special menu natin today. Hey, hello Jojo. Thank you for that um, energetic opening. Parang nakakaya hindi sa bayan. Ang taas. <laughs> ha? Absent, ako last, absent ako last time. Kasi ano bang meron? Basta meron akong personal errand that I really have to attend to. So Jojo and Sir Rai was able to you know, do this uh, run no, to, a, to a very few lang na people. Medyo nagulat tayo. But uh, ngayon medyo dumami na ulit tayo. And uh, as mentioned, we will be covering creativity and innovation for tonight. Not ibang time slot. Kasi yung, yung na-invite natin na speaker, medyo hindi... Ano to eh, galing to sa Pilipinas. Pilipina to, pero nasa ibang lugar kasi wow, to Wow, eh. exported so, pala siya. Eh. Stateside, kumbaga, wow. sabi nga ng matatanda nung Proud una. Proud Pinoy. Diba? <laughs> okay, so ngayon, um, let me give you a short background of our speaker for tonight before I give the floor to her. So our speaker is an interdisciplinary professional that has worked with student ventures and startups at George Mason University in Virginia. Ang hirap basahin nung specific na lugar eh. And has developed international market entry strategies for various small and medium enterprises for Virginia Small Business Development Center. Prior... To re- relocating to the United States, okay, kaya sabi ko sa inyo, stateside eh. She worked as a business analyst consultant for India Philippines. Ayan. She graduated with a bachelor's degree in industrial engineering. Yan, kabaro namin ni Sir Jojo. From the University of Santo Tomas in 2010. And a master's degree in interdisciplinary studies with a concentration in social entrepreneurship and a graduate certificate in non-profit management from George Mason University in 2019. Now, without further ado, let's all welcome our STEAM speaker for tonight, Michelle Melo. Hi, Mitch. Hi, Felix. Good evening, everyone. Can you hear me? <laughs> yes, we can hear you. All right. Yeah, so, um, kamusta, just... Mitch? I'm good. It's an early morning here, and I uh, would like to thank everyone who is uh, watching right now. Um, I, I know it's late for you out there, and um, I would like uh, to thank um, Felix for being considerate of, about the time difference. It's uh, 10 a.m. from where I am right now. <laughs> 12 hours, no? Oh, sige, 12 hours. Para, yeah. Para masulit natin tong time mo kasi ito ay something na heroes comeback mm-hmm. ni Mitch papunta sa atin. Though this is just virtual pero I think medyo matagal na siyang hindi nakakabalik ng Philippines. So ito yung kanyang pagbabalik no, via virtual uh, session with us. So Mitch, the floor is yours. See you later. All right, Thank you so much. So again, good evening everyone. Um, um, or Felix already gave a background about myself uh, but we are Tonight we're talking about uh, turning creative ideas into uh, to innovation. Um, right, like right now, uh, I know like we have a lot of ideas that we come up like randomly, like even when we are in the shower or when we're talking with friends or we're talking with um, with our classmates or we're with our coworkers. Especially nowadays uh, with pandemic, like a lot, it's there's a pressure to be more creative, be more innovative because. Um, It's a, it's a difficult time, um, but uh, let's be positive. Like uh, it's a it's a new day, so we'll we'll try to be a little bit more positive today. Um, so before I start, I would like to encourage everyone, if both uh, people watching in YouTube or uh, in Zoom, to comment your name, your degree if you're still a student, and um, or your occupation if you're already working, as well as your areas of interest. It doesn't have to be fully academic. I just want to get to know you better. Thank you. 
And uh, while we are doing that, or while you while you are all doing that, um, I would just like to introduce myself. So it's a little bit of like a little bit of introduction of what Felix has mentioned. So I'm Michelle. I'm a, I call myself an interdisciplinary professional just because I am a jack of all trades. So um, I'm an industrial engineer as, uh, as well. I think uh, uh, most uh, attendees are industrial engineering professionals and students. Um, I graduated from USC. So if there's someone from USC here, just comment. Um, and I recently graduated from a master's in interdisciplinary studies, uh, social entrepreneurship concentration uh, with um, graduate certificate in nonprofit management. Uh, what, why, non why nonprofit management? I'll probably explain later. So before I went back to school to do my master's degree, I worked as a business analyst for an IT consulting company in the Philippines for over six years. And um, while I was here, I worked as a market researcher. I'm still working as a market researcher for international business development for Virginia Small Business Development Center. So we do, uh, we do market research for um, local SMEs who wanted to expand both internationally and domestically. Um, and um, I do entrepreneurship programs for the Office of Entrepreneurship and Innovation for George Mason University. So it's basically uh, focused on student ventures, pitch competitions, and uh, other faculty ideas that they want implemented and they want support. Um, so like I mentioned, like um, for I do market research, so uh, it, it focuses on SMEs and startups. So if they want information about um, uh, some certain markets that they want to expand to, um, they want to figure out the demand, to figure out the market, um, uh, the analysis of the market and uh, the regulations as well. And I'm also a content creator, just to mention that. So I do blog about food and travel. That's basically it. So let's start with defining innovation. So what is innovation? So there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of uh, definition thrown out there, but this is my favorite. This is the one that actually um, scoped uh, out the actual definition of innovation. So innovation is the process of creating value by applying new solutions to meaningful problems. Um, so it's an integral part of entrepreneurship. So the innovation is what makes an uh, entrepreneur different from a business person. So um, an entrepreneur is someone who uh, creates uh, new ideas, who implements new ideas. Well, a business person is uh, someone who implements um, ideas that uh, already exist. So sometimes a lot of people um, um, mix that up and confuse that, but that is how we define entrepreneurship. Let me, please let me know if I'm speaking too quickly or anything, okay? Um, so let us further dissect the definition of innovation. So for this slide, I actually highlighted uh, the three important factors of being innovative or what makes it an innovation. So I, um, I highlighted creating value and new and meaningful problems. So let us go down further. So this is what uh, defines uh, what innovative ideas. Um, so if we so we discussed about the definition of innovation. So what makes your idea innovative? First, is your is your idea new? Uh, is it new? It doesn't mean that it's new, like it's new to the world or new to the whole and uh, it's new like per se, because right now I don't think there is a really purely new idea. Sometimes it's just like the, uh, like an improvement of already existing idea, or it can be new to the certain environment. Like it can be already existing, maybe here in the United States or 
it exists already in South Korea, but it that has not existed in the Philippines yet. So if you bring it to the Philippines, it's you consider it new. Second is, does the idea solve a meaningful problem? So we have a lot of ideas, like we throw, we throw out like, what if there's a flying car? Or what if, um, what if I can like just fly using my shoe? Um, but does it really solve a problem? The, is there, does it actually address anything? If it does not, um, it's just an invention. Uh, and does the idea create value? So um, value does just not does not mean just financial value, although that is majority of us think that if if it creates money, then it's valuable. But also there's a social uh, aspect of it. Uh, is there like a social impact to it? Or if there's like an economic um, impact for it and if there's an environmental impact, that is also value. So, I mean, if, if your idea is like it, but, um, if all of this three together, if it's new, if it solves a meaningful problem, or uh, if it creates value, then yes, your idea is innovative. Uh, and, I'm not sure if I missed anything. Oh, and also, um, I I'm, I'm just want to add about creating value. So it can also be like, a, if you have a certain product or a certain service you're thinking of, if, and that's your idea, it can also not just have like a financial value or social value, if it, does it really bring value to your customers? So let's say if it's like an end user product or an end user service, is it faster? Is it more convenient? Is it cheaper? Is it it, does it have better quality than any of the ones existing out there? So that is what you call value. And uh, let's do a little bit more deep, deep dive. So uh, like I mentioned, uh, your idea should be able to solve a meaningful problem, but a lot of people do not understand that they actually have need, a, need to have a problem to solve. Like they would come up with ideas and realize that they're the only ones who actually have that problem. And um, so a lot, a lot of uh, startups actually have a problem statement. So um, this one, uh, the one you see on your screen right now uh, is, a, is the problem statement of uh, one of the popular startups we have right now. And uh, I'll just make you guess on what it is. Uh, so um, what, you should, uh, if you're thinking of an idea, or if you wanted to move your, if you want your idea to be on to move to the next level, you have to state what problem are you trying to solve. Like, is it really a problem? Like, uh, have you actually interviewed people who are going to be your market for this problem? So there should be a way for you to explain the gap you're filling in the market. Um, you should be uh, interviewing people or you should be observing what is happening in that, uh, in that, uh, app, or in that environment that you're trying to um, innovate that problem in. So if you're in a certain organization or if you're in a certain community, let's say, well, let's say um, in Manila, like if there is a problem uh, right there, um, you should be able to ask the people who are actually affected or uh, who are, who is actually your target market. So uh, let's read through the problem of this startup. So this is their this is their problem statement. So um, their problem statement is that price is an important concern for customers booking travel online. Hotels ha leave you disconnected from the city and its culture, and there's no easy way exists to book a room with local or become a host. So just feel free to comment and I'll just let you guess what it is. Um, and uh, this is their solution. So this is what makes, this is what, this is basically your idea. So you should describe and how, you're, how you want to solve that problem. It, it needs to be concise. It doesn't have to be it doesn't have to be uh, wordy. Um, just 
these traits. And um, this is uh, what this uh, startup solution is. It's a web platform where users, where users can rent out their space to host travelers to save money when traveling, make money when hosting, and share culture um, and look, have a local connection to the city. Um, it's very important to not say something like, we are the only ones doing this because um, you're not. <laughs> Basically, you're not. Um, there, uh, especially if you're if you're pitching this idea to uh, to funders, they they do a lot of research. Uh, funders do a lot of research, and um, they actually have a lot more than enough startups that actually approach them. So it's more likely that you have that they know someone or they know more than someone um, who has the same idea as yours. It may be like a like a little bit similar to what you do, but it's not as unique as you think. It may be if you're the only ones doing that in a certain market. So please do not say that we're the only ones doing this. So uh, yeah, um, whoever whoever guessed that it, it is Airbnb. Yes, it is Airbnb. Uh, this is their one of their earliest uh, pitch decks when they were called Air Bed and Breakfast. So um, let's move on to the innovation matrix. Um, right now, there are many types of innovation. Um, they, a lot of people come up with the type of innovation, especially nowadays. Um, but I'm, going, I'm only going to highlight the few that I think are important. And um, which this one is very important because um, there are a lot of types of innovations out there. It doesn't have to be a new technology all the time, or it doesn't have to be um, uh, it doesn't have to be a uh, new market. Sometimes it can be a mix of both. So let us um, let us um, talk about this matrix. Um, so there are here uh, there are four types of um, innovation: um, architectural innovation, which is a mix of which is a technology that already exists but a new market. Um, radical innovation, which is a new technology and a new market, and uh, an existing technology and existing market, which is called incremental or organic innovation, and uh, disruptive innovation, which is new technology but ex existing market. So I, uh, the the term disruptive has been like thrown around many times, and um, I have some examples for you for us to be to further understand what it is. So um, for architectural innovation, um, uh, like the multi-purpose copier is an architectural innovation. Um, so before there's all, there are there are separate um, there are separate equipment for just anything. There's a separate printer. There's a there's a separate scanner. Um, I'm not sure if people still use a fax machine, but there's a separate fax machine. Um, but, but right now there's just one multi-purpose copier. Um, all of the technology exists already, but they just came up and put it all together and made it just one. And that is already an innovation. Of course, there would still be people who want to use a separate scanner and a separate printer, but there are people, these are people who are actually have more, who have space. So if you have, if you don't have enough space, but you want everything, um, that is a new market. So that is, uh, that's the use of having a multi-purpose photocopier. For the existing, uh, for incremental innovation, uh, we have the iPhone, the Apple iPhone. So the technology already exists. Um, I'm, I'm not sure if they have actually innovated the um, iPhone. I mean, they would add something to it every few years or maybe every few months, but there's nothing really new about it. But but they do a little bit of improvement to it per model. And that is what they call the incremental innovation. And the market already exists. Uh, there are a lot of um, Apple loyalists out there. And um, it's so rare that, a lot, that there would be people who are switching. Um, that's not their market. Their, market. their market is already 
the Apple loyalist. Um, for the radical innovation, uh, it's Netflix, but um, a lot of people consider Netflix as a disruptive um, innovation, but this is the, this case for, for Netflix is, is um, when Netflix uh, just started. So Netflix, before it became like, uh, before it became um, uh, what, we, what we know Netflix right now, it is actually an online video rental store. So before, back in the 90s, if you're old enough, uh, there are video rental store and stores and you have to go there to rent out your, uh, rent out movies and have to return on time. So Netflix, um, uh, and there are a lot, there's, there are people who actually do that, but there are people who want to watch movies, but they don't want to go out and actually pick out a movie, watch the movie, and then drive over to actually return them. So they created a market for people who actually want to watch movies, but they don't want to have the hassle of driving to the store to rent it out or return it. And that, uh, that part is, um, that is radical innovation. And, uh, and since we have Airbnb as our uh, prior example, um, Airbnb is uh, actually a disruptive um, innovation. So there's an existing market, which is um, budget travelers, where travelers actually want to experience culture uh, to the places that they travel in. Uh, but the, te the technology does not exist yet. So they made a technology where there's a, there's a platform where hosts can actually host their homes or their houses, and then um, travelers can just book their accommodations there. And of course, there are other types of innovation. Um, there's open innovation. Um, there's a, where people or organizations access the knowledge pool beyond one business. Um, that's like a lot of uh, a lot of technology companies do that right now. Like they hold they host hackathons. Um, some organizations have their own innovation labs or universities do that, uh, and they hold accelerators. And um, the most the most uh, important term is crowdsourcing. And also, uh, which still exists, it is not a bad thing. It is uh, closed innovation which are um, innovations that are developed by companies themselves because there's the very important information or it's very sensitive information. Um, for example, patented technologies or pharmaceutical research, especially like um, if it involves, um, let's say COVID-19. So it's not something that you just have, you can throw around and gather ideas from people because in a, it's, it's a very specialized uh, technology or it's, it's a very specialized uh, subject matter. And there's social innovation. This one is very important for me. That's why I will have to uh, dwell on this a little bit. Um, uh, this is a social innovation. So it's social practices that aim to meet the social needs of a community. So like I mentioned before, um, value, it's not just about money. It's not just about um, financial impact. Um, it, can be, it can be social impact as well. Um, one of them is, well, one of them is poverty or, or like the lack of education in the, in the, in, the, in a certain community. Um, I, be, I, I have to mention this one because, uh, it's not really, um, that discussed well, especially if you're in engineering school. Um, but I wanted to highlight this because especially if you're thinking about a topic to make, um, I hope that you think about having uh, something that has social impact as well. Um, so um, what I have um, the, the, this is examples that are very common nowadays, or I'm not, if you have heard is a uh, fair trade. So there's a lot of like food products that, uh, that, ha that has this label. So it's actually a movement. It's, a, it's, a, it's an organization that actually help producers in developing countries achieve sustainable and equitable trade relationships. So, um, so before, or I think it's a, it's still happening right now. Like uh, farmers are not paid in a, uh, are not paid fairly. 
uh, when they sell their produce to um, the distributors. So uh, fair trade ins ensures that um, the farmers have been paid well, so they can have uh, so they can sustain their business and um, having that um, actually solve that problem that they that they can actually have uh, the capital to actually have the next produce. So I, I wish uh, it, it's something that we would practice in the Philippines, especially like that, that, uh, we have we are an agricultural country. And um, I just want to highlight that if you are using the third the term third world country, I would encourage you to please use the term developing countries instead. Um, that's it. And um, if you have if you know about Tom Shoes, Tom Shoes is actually a for profit company. So it's but they have um, they have they're big on social innovation. So they have this business model called one for one, which means that if you buy one pair of shoe, they would donate one shoe, one another pair to um, uh, youth in one of the developing countries. I think it started in Argentina when the when the the founders um, saw that they produce shoes, but they don't they like a lot of children do not wear it. So. Um, he started um, this brand called Tom's so that when uh, people were able to buy, buy one pair of shoe, like they would be able to donate shoe to um, the children who cannot afford one. And there are other types of innovations, which I will not uh, dwell on it anymore because you probably know it more than I do. Um, this is a uh, process innovation. Um, Product or service innovation, brand innovation, um, business innovation, technical innovation, and environmental innovation. Yes, Merit, I said social entrepreneurship, but um, let me just clarify that being socially innovative doesn't have to be just within the social entrepreneurship atmosphere. It can be within um, it, it it can be within corporate. It can be within a small medium enterprise. Um, so um, yeah, that's, uh, it can be anywhere. It can be hybrid as well. And we go next. So what are the things to consider when you're an innovator? Um, first is you have to know your market. So uh, like we mentioned, uh, like I mentioned earlier, um, you have to have a problem that you wanted to solve. And you also have to have a solution that you the, which is your idea, of course. But you will also have to know who is your market, who is your audience. Do they actually need it? And um, you cannot just have a solution and then force them to just like it and not understand that they would actually would not want it. Um, and you have to understand what drives their decision. This is why there are like, there are surveys or there are interviews or uh, which, uh, which answers our question, can they afford a solution? Um, and how do I access the market? So if you, if you, you have to ask around, like if you, if you have this target market and they say, um, you like cannot afford it, or if we like it, but we cannot afford it, maybe you have to change your market. Maybe that's the wrong market for you or they say that this is not actually something that I would want. Then probably you might have to um, pivot your uh, pivot your idea. And uh, I have to I have to highlight it that there's a lot of startups out there that failed because they do not understand what the market wants. Like the, it's a it's a it's a, a lot of startup founders. Um, fault or mistake that they fail to see that there's not a need for it. Um, so it, it's actually, uh, it's not, um, when I read an article about like where, why startups fail, um, it's not about, um, it's, they do, do, do not have enough funding or their, their products do not work or their service do not work. It's 42% is just because uh, they don't know what the market wants. They, they fail to understand what the market wants. So that is very important. 
So if you're doing a feasibility study, you will have to interview, not just survey. Um, interview is very important. You have to under you have to do a deep dive on what makes them buy something, what makes them change their minds and change from what they're currently using right now to a new one. So next, and uh, also you have to know your competitors. Um, it's for both um, direct or uh, indirect competition. So what are their strengths? What are their weaknesses? And what is their um, positioning in the market? So uh, let's say you wanna build your, you wanna start your own coffee shop and um, you have to know this, the coffee shops that are around the area or who are more likely to expand in your area and what makes them, what ma what makes them um, a better competitor than you and that, or what makes them, what makes you better than them? So what's their positioning in the market? Are they, are they catering to, um, to A, B and C market or are they catering to just C, D market? And um, what does your solution, that will, that will make you figure out what does your solution have that will make your idea better than theirs. So you cannot just be equal to them. You have to be better than them. You must have the edge. So uh, I have, uh, let me just tell you a bit, uh, story about this student uh, venture that they wanted to make their own social media app, which is very common nowadays. A lot of students want to make their own dating apps, or they want their own. They want to make their own. Um, they want to make their own social media app. Um, they wanted to make their own meet up app, and I asked them, "So, what does your idea have? What is the features of your idea?" And she started. She started describing, um, basically, meet up. And she told me, uh, and then I told her, you know that you're just describing meetup to me right now, right? And the student was like, well, I don't really use meetup. So if you're just making another meetup, why would I want to use your app? If I already know that there's an established app right there, you will have, even if you don't use it, even if, um, even if you're not comfortable doing it, you will have to explore your competitor. You will have to know what is existing right now. Otherwise, you're just not, you're just repeating what they already have. You're just copying their idea. So you're not really making something new. So we go back to how we define innovation. It is not new. You know, if it's not new, it's not an innovation. So, um, Create, uh, another thing to consider is creating a business model. Um, I told myself that I would not be putting charts or graphs here, but here I am. So we have a lot of, uh, we have a lot. So if you have this idea, if you want to turn it to a business, or even if you have a social uh, innovation idea, um, having a business model would help you understand if your uh, idea is sustainable or scalable. Um, I we a lot of people do not use uh, business plans anymore unless it's um, unless they're further into their stages. Um, they're further into the development stage, but this one, uh, if you're an early stage idea, this will make you understand the important factors of um, creating a business idea. So I, I, I assume that everyone is um, everyone is uh, familiar with this. So this one, um, you will have to all. This one will make you consider sustainability and scalability. Um, let me just um, let me just tell you a little bit of story. Like I mentioned, that it has before that uh, your idea has to have a value. It has to be more. It can be more convenient. Can be um, cheaper. It can be have better quality. It can be faster or whatever. So I have another student who has this another idea who is who it, that is. Uh, a transportation idea. And he wanted it to be both inexpensive and convenient. And uh, 
Oh yes, uh, Sir Lex, it's a business model canvas. Um, you can find it in Google. You can find you can uh, you can download one. I, I just downloaded it from Google. So um, and uh, this student told me, oh, I want to have this transportation idea that is both inexpensive and um, convenient. And I told him, you cannot be both. Uh, you cannot be. Uh, people would actually pay more for convenience. Um, and uh, it's not sustainable if it's both inexpensive and convenient at the same time. So if you have drivers, let's say it's sort of like Uber and it's, uh, and it's not expensive, how are you supposed to pay your drivers? Or, but it's super convenient. How are, how are, you, how are, you, how are you going to sustain the convenience? Uh, this is, um, I think, um, a better a better comparison would be riding a jeepney compared to riding a cab. So riding a jeepney is not convenient, but it's cheaper. But if you ride a cab, it is more convenient, but it's more expensive. So you cannot be both. You have to, that's why choosing your market is very important because some people cannot pay, um, cannot pay for your product or some people are willing to pay for it or like your product it is impossible for an idea to be for everyone um you cannot say oh it is for everyone no it's not um if, if you make it the cheapest one there are people who wouldn't even pay for stuff even if um even if it's cheap it's like put it's like putting a steakhouse in the middle of nowhere like who would go there or who would pay for that if if it's super far or pe the people in that area cannot even afford it so if you put that steakhouse let's say in makati then people will afford it because um because people have the purchasing power for it oh i hope i made i i, I didn't confuse you with that So, um, so you have this idea already. So what's, what to do next? So what to do next is to actually test it out. Uh, it doesn't have to be a bigger audience. You do not have to go big right away. Um, you can have a group or you can have, you can have random people test it out and um, have them uh, provide you feedback. And, um, so you can use that feedback to improve your idea. And one of the things that we should consider or we should remember is not afraid to fail. Nobody gets it the first time. A lot, there are a lot of things here. There are a lot of ideas that are, exist nowadays that is very far off from the original idea that they had before. The best example is Facebook. Um, it used to ev even be called the Facebook and now it's just called Facebook. And now they have like a lot of other features that they didn't have before. Um, like um, one of the best example is because it exists in the Philippines is Grab. It used to be just Grab Taxi. Um, now it's just Grab because they have a lot of other features already. Um, they even have Grab Food, which they don't have before. So um, you should be open to pivoting your idea. Um, and th that's, uh, that's, a, that's why I have this photo of this, um, uh, of this clothing, because before they actually reproduce clothes, they actually test it out, they actually create a prototype, and before they actually make the, make the actual clothing, you know what I mean? So please uh, do not skip prototyping or testing part, because it's very important, and uh, you will have to pivot anyway. You, you must consider that you do not have the best idea ever, that the users or your market might have a better thing in mind, or they may have, um, they may have suggestions that maybe, that maybe, um, that make more sense. And uh, eventually create an implementation plan. Um, a lot, um, th this is something that uh, I think I should 
I would not dive into anymore. But this is something it really uh, this implementation plan would depend on what type of innovation you're doing. And what else? What's next? Um, so if you, you consider yourself an innovator, you have this innovation, congratulations. But what's next for you? Um, this is what my uh, mentor tells me. Uh, you should find your tribe. You should find people you share your interests with or who has the skills uh, needed to make your idea a lot better. So this picture that I have on my slide is a picture of Steve Jobs and Steve Wozniak uh, when they were starting Apple computers. Um, not a lot of people know that Steve Jobs is not an engineer. He's actually a designer. So he's the one who designed the products. But it was Steve Wozniak, who's the engineer, who is actually in charge of doing um, whatever else you see right now. So they work together because they have the same interests, but they have a different skill set. So you, even if you're an engineer, um, you, must, you must look for other people who actually have the skill set that you need to make this idea successful. Um, this is why uh, you should always network with um, other people, network with professionals, network with um, faculty, or just network with, um, with, peop uh, with people that are outside your comfort zone. Um, and um, have an exit strategy. So there's not, it's, exit strategy is not something that a lot of um, entrepreneurs or innovators talk about, but I have to put it here because um, it is very important um, that you do not uh, you do not go around the same cycle of uh, having to do the same thing over and over your entire life. Um, I have this uh, photos here. Um, I'm somewhere in that photo which is one of, the, one of the coffee shops that I visited in San Diego, California uh, for Ashoka back in 2019. Um, they're a social enterprise and they provide youth employment for, um, for the residents of that area. So that area is a low income community and a lot of, uh, a lot of youth there do not have the direction to, uh, do, not have the, do not have the support that they have for them to continue going to college. So that's what they're doing. And uh, the owners um, offered that they have an exit strategy for it. And their exit strategy is that we are not, that they're not going to do, they're not going to run the coffee shop forever. They're going to pass it off to someone who's just as passionate as they are, who, who actually is from um, that community. And um, it's important because, it's important for me to share this because they actually exited recently. Uh, and they actually pass it off to someone else, and um, they um, and they're they are now just a nonprofit organization that focuses on the same thing, which is youth empowerment. And um, I I just like that idea that um, you you're not stuck with just one thing forever. And uh, of course, uh, there's this old social media. You can see how old I am because I know this social media stuff. Um, the original social media, which is MySpace. So uh, MySpace and Friendster do not exist right now, like it's always Facebook or, right now and or Instagram. But we, ha we, ha um, we, see, we see them as failures, but they're actually not because MySpace was sold for $580 million. And uh, I think one of their founders, which is uh, Tom Anderson is worth like probably $200 million. So you will have to know, you have to know when you have to exit. You have, or um, uh, you have uh, enough of innovation or you wanna try something new. So, and uh, uh, I shared, uh, I have friends that are here because apparently, well, in, during their early days, um, they Google offered to buy them out for $30 million, but they declined. So. They, they, they did not exit and um, they just went through and they just dissolved. So there's a, you should have to know when you have to stop. 
So, I'm not saying that you should stop as soon as you innovate it, but I'm saying that you should have uh, you should have an exit strategy. Are you going to have to? Are you going to sell your company eventually, or are you going to expand it more, or are you buying more companies if you're uh, if you're able, or um, are you going to make this uh, a family company where you're going to pass it off to your children or your grandchildren? You have to have that plan. And uh, that's it. Thank you. And if you have questions, please comment. Hi, Mitch. Hello. That was a very nice presentation. I, I was listening across the slides. Ako yung nagko-comment. Ako yung magulo sa comment. Kasi, <laughs> I, yeah, I, I really, you know, I, I really have this connection dun sa mga slides kasi di ba, we're doing business and mm -hmm. yung ibang mga yung ibang mga principles the so, some of the great principles I I took note of them kasi parang naisip ko oo nga no? this could be applicable to not only for yung idea pa lang siya that, that will mm -hmm. later bloom into a full scale uh, social enterprise or or a company maybe pero even dun sa nag exist na, it would be very applicable also. So parang nakita ko parang, ah, okay, yung, yung mga concepts na binanggit niya, I can still tweak some parts of Aztlex to, you know, to to have mm -hmm. this. Parang na, 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 natuloy ako. So, mabupuyat na naman kami ni Jojo. <laughs> <laughs> so, yun. But anyway, thank you. Thank you for that wonderful session. Very concise. Very on point, no? And, um, thank you. Guys, yeah. We are. Uh, we have like 30 participants sa YouTube, and we have around 40 participants here. 35, kasi less yung ating mga panelist accounts. So if you have questions for Mitch, this is the best time for you to do that. I think Mitch can accommodate uh, at most 10 to 15 uh, minutes for Q and A. So we finish at 11 uh, a.m. her time, p.m. our our time, naman. Okay. Okay. What questions do you have? Or if you have questions yourself, go ahead. <laughs> ah, ako? Yeah. Um, dun lang sa ano. Pero actually, you discuss it naman. Yung sa exit strategy. Kasi most of the... I, I, I've I known um, a guy here named Carlo P. Valencia. He's into startup PH training. So yun yung parang mm -hmm. ano niya. Advocacy niya. And... Um, Marami siya tinuturo. Most of the things na tinuturo niya or sinishare niya sa akin are things that are very, very similar or highly similar to what you mentioned. Pero yung isa dun sa na ano ko is yung sa exit, yung, mm -hmm. yung when to stop. Kasi most of, di ba, parang um, we have this, I don't know if this is applicable only for Filipinos, but parang, di ba, pag Filipino yung 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 ano mo upbringing mo para oh wag kang wag kang sumuko kagad para na simulan mo oh. kasi so parang kahit di ba minsan eh, eh, hindi ko alam kung minsan gan wala kang number wala akong statistics but ano lang to para based on what i see or what i've seen parang kaya nalulugi kaya tuloy-tuloy na nalulugi so parang they keep on striving even though parang wala na talagang pag-asa so parang mas mm -hmm. nababaon sila dun sa sa depth nung, nung pagkakautang, if, if this is something na ano, yun. So, uh, any ad, are there any red flags or lalo na for startups pagdating sa ganito? Like dun sa Facebook, ay sa, sorry, Friendster, you mentioned that they, Google um, tried to buy them for like 30 million but they didn't um, uh, went uh, parang push through. So, parang, mm -hmm. are there any general guidelines or red flags, especially for people who wants to pursue an idea? Tapos, parang, saan siya pwedeng, ano yung mga indicators? Ah, teka lang, kailangan ko na mag-stop or kailangan ko lang gawin tong exit strategy ko. Um, I think wala namang, uh, I think that wala naman siyang, um, wala naman siyang science. Kasi it, uh, just like I mentioned, um, it really depends on what your idea is. Um, I guess um, makinig ka na, you have to listen to people. That's why you, that's why having your tribe is important. Na iba yung iba yung skill set nila. It's because sometimes like you 
you tend to just listen for uh, to yourself. Um, uh, it's very common. Na matikas sa ulo mo. <laughs> it's very common if you're very passionate with something. Mm-hmm. Um, it's uh, very important to have empathy, and it's very important to actually listen to what the market wants. Yes. Um, because yeah. naman you keep on funding the same idea. Mm-hmm. Dagdag ka na lang ng dagdag ng capital, tapos wala naman na yar, wala naman pumibili. Mm-hmm. So maybe you have to take time. You have to pause and start looking at the numbers. If walang growth, if walang um, if walang demand, maybe you should start looking or asking the market again. Like, ano ba yung gusto nyo? Mm-hmm. <laughs> or gusto nyo ba talaga to? Or mm-hmm. uh, baka, baka you or need baka, to just yeah. do something else. Or baka we're just assuming that people wants what we created or what we uh, what we introduced to them. Kasi minsan mm-hmm. meron din tayong, uh, I think that's part of cognitive bias by most of the founders or um, yung mga startup yun nga, founders na they they always hindi ko nila lahat ha pero parang based na sa mga nakita ko narinig ko na mga coming from the stories of friends like you sa ibang mga nasa startup community meron din pa din somehow na ganun especially siguro kapag wala kang mentor walang someone na nagaguide sa who been mm-hmm. through the 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 failures kasi di ba you mentioned also failures talagang sabi nga fail fast even doon mm-hmm. sa corporation na pinagalingan ko previously, yun din yung, yun yung tinatry niya lang instill sa amin. Parang, uh, you have to fail fast. In, failing doesn't mean that it's it, it's really something na nag-fail ka or wala kang makukuha out of it. It's basically mm-hmm. a learning process that you have to undergo, I think, para at least mas, mas para mas maging mabilis yung process nung, nung success. Mm-hmm. Parang ganun siya. So, yun. Mm-hmm. Siguro mentoring would be one key to you know to to avoid yon yung yung mga ganong pitfall ayan and actually more like willingness to learn um yeah. like uh, in here um i i support students so mm-hmm. i also meet a lot of students who are like oh uh, who are like sponges like ma- talaga nakikinig siya uh, or nakikinig sila pero mm-hmm. meron din namang students na matigas talaga yung ulo kahit uh, anong gawin mo <laughs> parang <laughs> Parang nakwento mo yun sa akin one time eh. No? You, you, I think you mentioned that already dun sa, sa ano, dun sa meet-up Uh-oh. na ano, I think we, we, we had that conversation before. Oo. Like, um, meron talagang gano'n na kahit anong sabihin mo or kahit anong advice mo eh. Um, mm-hmm. Talagang hindi sila nakikinig. Uh-oh. So, um, I think that one is nakabeta na yata sila. I'm not really mm-hmm. sure. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> Ayan. So, thank you for that uh, insight. Wala ba tayong question from YouTube? John, dyan ka ba? Can you, ano, check Wala so out? far. Wala. Parang, natutulog na ba kayo? Kasi ngayon lang tayo nag 10pm. Joy, ka, do you have... Ha? Do you I'm have questions uh, um, to, to Mitch? Actually, Miss Mitch, I, uh, siguro curiosity lang. No? Uh, what can you mm-hmm. advise to those uh, impulsive uh, people no na go uh, parang may maiisip lang bilang go agad without uh, without thinking of the risk parang uh, dive now and then think later or swim later so what can you advise to those kind of people i just usually would say good luck because <laughs> 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 Kasi if you're like if you're if you're that uh parang ano yan eh it's it's like gambling if you're if you're if you behave like a gambler then you expect to win like a gambler you win you lose mm-hmm. and um kung marami kang funding or may pera ka if you mm-hmm. want to gamble like that go ahead wala namang wala namang wala namang pumipigil sa if that's your own money but if you if you have funders that backing mm-hmm. you up and uh, if um if you have if pe- sarili mong pera yan if you're bootstrapping it and uh, mm. maybe you will have to you will have to step back a little bit and chill and do the actual work before you actually do, you actually dive in mm. <laughs> so it's a matter of ano chances ng success mhm mm. siguro ano parang to that context if i may Mm-hmm. Um, meron kasing di ba pag, pag small like for example uh, uh, especially now we're on pandemic so so many people are 
uh, venturing into doing side hustles or yung mga business business online businesses so baka sa ganung context because maybe we're talking about yes this is something that you, 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 you this is your own your own money tsaka siguro sa context na maliit lang yung yung mawawala sa iyo pero siguro mm-hmm. kung kung medyo malaki kumbaga in terms of scalability baka hindi hindi siya applicable or baka less less uh, applicable siya no kasi yun nga mm-hmm. pag pag may mga funding funding na ganyan or nag crowdsource ka ng ng, ng uh, capital mo mahirap ayan, Uh-oh. ayan you're, you're... Um, mm-hmm. You have a you if you're just accountable to yourself then go ahead mm-hmm. but if you're accountable to a lot of other people um if nangutang ka or mm-hmm. you have funders like you should really think about it yeah agree agree ayan so we have no we have ata ka lang meron meron dito eh babasahin ko na lang from Miss Marites Diallo Uh, thank you so much. This is very timely as I am doing a study about social enterprise. But mine is for public admin course. Uh, I didn't know I can connect this to my industrial engineering course as well. Thanks a lot. So parang ano lang siya, remarks. Thank you so much, Mertes. If you yeah. have other questions, um, please feel free to connect with me. Yeah, um, I yes. would love to help out. Uh, especially in social enterprise. Like I know maraming social enterprise in Pilipinas, but we do not have like a lot of um, actual cases for it. Um, I think the most uh, popular one is um, human nature. Hmm, talaga? Nag-start uh-huh. siya na start. Ay, nag-start up siya dati. Uh, human nature yung, make, yung uh, beauty products. It's, Gandang, it's, an uh, so- uh, it's a social uh, enterprise. Uh, and... Um, I think they have multiple business models. Um, that is, I think that's the most uh, that's the most popular one that I know. Nagaling mm. Pilipinas. Mm. Ayan. Sige. Ah, another question from YouTube. Okay. Mm-hmm. From Kayla de la Cruz. Hello. Mm-hmm. We have uh, an innovation and it stopped in improving our product for a year. Okay, I don't know if if this if, if this is in what context. Pero ang question niya, what advice if uh oh, para what siguro what advice can you give us? Will we continue our innovation? So parang ano pala siya? Meron silang innovation but it stopped for a year for about a year now. So ang question niya, mm-hmm. ituloy ba daw nila or hindi? What what would be your what would be your advice? Actually, be if it's I'm not even sure what product is uh, mm-hmm. Kyla talking about. Um, I'm, bakan I I'm not sure if uh, she's the one I'm chatting with um a few um recently. Iko ba yon? But I'm not sure. <laughs> uh, it it doesn't. It really depends on your product. If this is this an end user product or is this a uh, product used by organizations? Um, maybe you have to start from scratch because mm-hmm. a year is a makes a whole mm-hmm. lot of difference. Mm-hmm. Ah, okay. like, mm-hmm. Yeah, you have to start from scratch. Yeah. So generally speaking, Mitch, no, just to put context to that answer. Um mm-hmm. so you're saying that yung yung relevance in terms mm-hmm. of uh time time frame. Kumbaga parang mm-hmm. if you if you started something a year ago and you mm-hmm. want to continue the same thing without para mm-hmm. adjusting some some you know features or whatsoever, baka ang sinasabi natin is baka hindi na siya applicable ngayon. Kung baga, parang baka yung problema ang nakita mo before is mm-hmm. not a, a problem anymore today. Yun yung sinasabi mo doon, no? Exactly. And, uh, bah- and um, there's a difference with technology. Like, um, Oo. Baka nag-shift na or baka yun nga, na-solve yung na pala completely. Meron na palang nag exist na ganun. Mm-hmm. So, it's not an innovation anymore. Baka kopyahin nyo na lang yung something mm-hmm. that already exists ah. na na agad. Ayan. So that that's that that would put more context, yeah. Yes. That, that's, that's why a very I highly, good idea. That's a highly advice um people if you're very innovative, if you want to search for new ideas, is to just continually read. Like mm. magbasa kayo ng news or magba- it doesn't have to be political all the time. Um business news or <laughs> like journals. Mm-hmm. <laughs> or even mm. may, may mga social media or may social media groups na Um, they share actual um, knowledge mm-hmm. or actual innovation, like uh, the the group that we have, Pinoy IE. Um, wow, promotion. Healing network. <laughs> oh my God. Yes. Tapos, 
Ayon. Uh, just continually a network and read. Um, if I'm not sure what you have there in the mm. Philippines or yeah. what. Anong mm. anong newspapers and, yung high mm. on technology and stuff. But if there's journals or there's like um, memberships or associations that are into like that, I think you should keep yourself updated all the time. Well said. Well said. Thank you, Mitch. Uh, do we have other questions? Mohang ang ang ganda ng flow ng discussion natin. Mas maganda sana if you can join us in this discussion. I think um, Mitch can can still be with us for another couple of minutes. Of course, of course. Ano hina natin to? Let's maximize this opportunity, no? But we're actually Mitch and I were talking about. I, I mentioned to her that we're Jojo mentioned actually Jojo started this idea, Mitch. No, yung sin sabi ko mm-hmm. yung we're, we're trying to run um Jojo na yun. You kasi I'm running design sprint, design thinking workshops for students who will be mm-hmm. taking research or feasibility study. So baka if if Mitch uh, times uh, permits, baka ma invite natin siya to be one of the mentor, one of the facilitator. Moving on, no. Inaayos lang namin, oh, inaayos lang natin Jojo, no, yung ating schedule kasi medyo natatambakan tayo ng mga activities. Meron pa ba tayong questions? Questions coming from YouTube, questions coming from uh, Zoom. O baka so, meron kayo na Sir Lex. Oh, yung mga feasibility study niyo na meron kayo itong mm-hmm. itanong, ha. Kasi kung wala na, we'll we'll let go of Mitch for now so that uh ano tayo baka move forward tayo so let's let's wait for about 30 seconds to to close the Q&A as Jojo is uh sharing itong poster ni and this this one pala si Mitch agreed earlier na this will be converted into an e-learning so if you have friends na hindi na nakasama for this particular session this very good session tonight This will be converted into one of uh, Aslex PH Academy's uh, alpha digital natin na platform. We will turn this into an e-learning course naman para you can go go back to it and uh, your friends and colleagues can uh, still have the same somehow experience that we had this night. Okay, so I think wala nang gustong magtanong for now. Yeah. So again, Mitch, thank you, thank you, thank you for thank gracing you for our me. session. Yeah. So please um, follow Mitch sa kanyang LinkedIn account. She was able to share yung QR code. Pero kung hindi man, Michelle um, Angela Melo. Do ko lang alam na may Angela pa pala. Michelle Angela <laughs> Melo sa LinkedIn. Yeah. Makikita niyo po siya. And you can. Or- Uh-oh. If you're a member Under. of uh, Pinoy IEs, I'm there. Oh, so, yeah, so Pinoy of IEs. Are there. Yeah, yung mga IE viewers natin, very active Uh-oh. ni Mitch yan. Okay, doon ko din lang siya nakilala. So again, Mitch, thank you. So moving okay. forward, I I'll get in touch with you doon sa ano, sa mga ano pa natin, sa ating mga future collaborations. So thank you, thank you, thank you and keep safe. Thank you. Thank you. Okay then, stay safe and healthy. Bye. Bye. And everyone, hindi pa po tayo tapos because Jojo will be doing some reminders before we go into the actual, ano nga ba tayo ito? Actual if, uh, attendance evaluation form for the e certificate. <laughs> Ay, ikaw, sige, ikaw na lang. Quickly lang naman. Sige Ayan, lang. Uh, so, I uh, would like to thank everyone for uh, staying late uh, with us uh, until right now. So, uh, this will be... Uh, This will be accredited with your certificate. So, yeah. So, kindly fill out the attendance form in the link after this uh, announcement. So, only those with both Zoom link and attendance details will be given. Will be given an e certificate. So that includes the uh, the YouTube fellows and the team Zoom. Okay. So attendance link will close after one hour. So kindly like our page and subscribe to our channel, uh, Ask Next Page Academy, for more updated uh, and free webinars. And also, we'd like to announce for our upcoming events, uh, Lean Six Sigma Yellow Belt Certification Program, starting tomorrow until October 24. No, so kung may magusto pang humabol, yan habulang yan. So this includes the e-learning plus a Saturday live classes. Also. 
will be having our Lean Six Sigma Green Belt Certification Program starting on October 10 to November 15. Also, this includes your e-learning, Saturday live classes, and unlimited coaching hours no, from the Ask Next PH team. So kindly hurry up, no? Kasi sobrang mapupuno na ang mga slots. Ayan. And next, we have, uh, kung may gusto pong humabot, this will be tomorrow. Actually, it is moved uh, because of the AAG um, maintenance. So this will start for tomorrow. Kung may gusto pong humabot for the wave two of our uh, trademark training of Certified Data Analyst Program. So this will be held on weekends 8 a.m. to 12 noon. So we will be learning uh, R no? and and some data ana uh, analysis hacks. No? So this will uh, this will be uh, what's it called that a, a capstone base no? certification program. And also we have our Kaizen professional a CKP also a trademark program of Aslex Speech Academy. So we're in we will be learning the the Kaizen model. This has the e-learning and Saturday live classes. So this will be very exclusive guys because first 100 lang ang tatanggapin natin na for the 50% discount. Next is we have our coaching and mentoring fundamentals. So kindly join us. That will be from 8 to 10 p.m. starting from October 6 to October 27. So for those are aspiring uh, managers, supervisors, trainers, this is the best um, a training no or masterclass for you and again ask next is searching for a partner now we're looking for partner brand ambassadors and that will uh, help us spread the innovative uh, learnings and so kindly send us a message no we'll be happy we'll be very very happy to uh to become an alpha partner and alpha ambassador with you also we'll be a uh, partnering with um with the Manila Coding Camp for launching of the AutoCAD, no, uh, AutoCAD for early, uh, AutoCAD for basic AutoCAD, starting tomorrow. And no, so kami mga habol, and this is for the ages 13 and up, and so can you upgrade your skills, no, yeah. So for the link, yeah, ito na yung link natin, no. So fill out the attendance form, okay. So ito ang ating uh, Ito ang ating attendance. Okay. Ayan. So, po, kindly scan the QR code and ayan, para mag-fill out po ng form. So, ipipin ko siya sa ayan, sa YouTube and for the Zoom, no? So, that's all. So, baka may dagdag pa si Sir Lex? Ah, wala na. Gabi niya eh. Ayan, no? <laughs> <laughs> so, by next, uh, by the way, by next session, we'll be having another Session. Balik tayo sa time slot natin. We'll be having it uh, Friday 7 to 8 p.m. Pero tama-tama, uh, we, we, we had innovation. Next week, we'll be having a topic about intellectual property. So that's yeah, intellectual property, patent, trademarks, copyrights. Yes. And we will be joined by an expert on that area coming from uh, Tundayag IP Group. Uh, no, yun. So yun. Abangan nyo yun, no? ipapublish natin maybe Monday na yung post. Uh, so we can now, we can learn the difference between the R, the, the letter C, yeah, and register the PM, ba siya, trademark ba siya, bakit kailangan ng intellectual property, etc. So, right. yeah, kasi kapag may innovation, kailangan din natin ng intellectual yes, property. Yes, no? So uh, that's all. Uh, th thank you very much for supporting Aztec Speech Academy for our endeavors. So, to cap this day, so let's continue to become hashtag, hashtag significantly better. better. Bye-bye. That's all. Maraming salamat. Goodbye.